When I first started using the brain back in 1998-99, um, I was the tech industry analyst. And so the reason the brain really stuck really early was that it was immensely useful for what I was doing. Uh, for example, uh, for example, I'll go to Kleiner Perkins Caulfield and Byers by typing in Kleiner Perk. And here's Kleiner Perkins. Underneath, you'll see some of their principles. Now, I don't guarantee that all these people are still there. In fact, Mary Meeker has now gone off and started her own company, um, which I think I've, I've got noted. I just don't have her as an alumna here. Uh, I could do that. I'll do that later. But here on the left, I use these lateral links for investments. So Kleiner Perkins invested in Audible Technology, Baidu at Home, Affectiva. What does Affectiva do? Oh, they're, uh, they track emotions and feelings online. They not only got money from, from Kleiner, they got money from Horizon Ventures, Marion Capital, and WPP Investments. Who's WPP? Oh, that's right. That's WPP Group, founded in 1971 as Wire and Plastic Products Group. Isn't that interesting? Um, they're one of the major buzz empires. Uh, they own a ton of ad agencies from Millward Brown and AKQA to the Tempest Group and Young and Rubicam and Zazz. They are just a monster empire. So they were an investor. And as I click down here on the bottom, this is breadcrumbs. So everything I've been clicking on shows up down here at the bottom. They invested in Affectiva. They also invested in Spotrunner. This is clearly not uh, the, a complete list of what they invested in, just the stuff that happened across my radar. So take, take my brain with a, a grain of salt here. But Spotrunner was, in fact, a spot ad market. Uh, they also got money from Interpublic, which is one of the other big groups. So here's Interpublic Group, another Buzz Empire. And if I go to Buzz Empires, you'll see Omnicom Group, Publicis, WPP, Interpublic, uh, Havas. These are sort of the, the really big ad agencies. And by the way, if I'm wrong, and I, you know this is clearly a Western biased view, but if I'm, you know, if you have things that you'd like me to add to the brain, send me email, and I'll add them. I'll look them up and I'll put them in. Again, this is just uh, just one person's perspective. But if I go back to Affectiva, measuring, so notice that back in 1998, 99, and a few years after that, I was a tech industry analyst. Knowing who invested in whom was really important. Knowing who competes with whom was really important to me. So here's measuring and tracking emotions. Here's a whole subcategory called sentiment analysis. Uh, here's uh, affect labs and stock mood. I don't remember ever having heard of these. And if you type these into Google, you might find some vestiges of them, but it turns out that, as Nassim Taleb tells us, we never hear from the graveyard. So a lot of these dead companies have just gone away. I don't get rid of them because it's super useful, and also you can use the, the Wayback Machine um, to look up uh, broken URLs. So the Internet Archive has a, a, a something called the Wayback Machine, which is an uh, actually homage to uh, the Wayback Machine, which was from the Rocky and Bullwinkle show. If you remember, Mr. Peabody used to use the Wayback Machine to do uh, time travel. Uh, and in fact, of course, I've got time travel in my brain. And there's a whole bunch of things like the, the TARDIS from Doctor Who, uh, that, who you know, which is used for time travel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's a whole series of ways in which you can see uh, time travel show up. So. Uh, second way that th this is a, another way in which so this is another way in which my brain was incredibly useful to my job. It's, this is probably the, the reason that I took so quickly to the brain and then started expanding from this very practical use in my job as a tech industry analyst.